here we go. Okay, so why is it that we prepare your schedule as a new student? Um, I know a lot of students when they're coming in, you're excited to attend college, you're looking forward to the classes that you're going to be taking, you're looking forward to having the college experience, and you have interest in the coursework that you're going to be studying as a college student throughout your whole experience. So why is it that we put your schedule together in your first semester? Well, actually, the Academic Planning and Advising Office reserves seats for incoming students because current students that are gonna be your peers when you start this fall actually register for classes in the prior semester for the coming semester. So in, for, in this instance, folks registered in April for this fall. And so we wanted to make sure that everybody had the opportunity to be registered for classes and had um, a variety of class options and courses that would meet requirements towards your degree. So we save seats for you. Um, another main reason for that is that a number of students who start at Geneseo are transferring in some kind of college credit, whether that be AP classes or IB credits, or perhaps classes taken through another college or university. There are a lot of classes at Geneseo that require you to have taken a previous class or what we call a prerequisite class first before you can take the next level. And by having access to making your schedule on your behalf, we can enter you into that next level course, even if the computer system doesn't yet know you've taken the prerequisite class. So in that respect, we have somewhat magical powers to help you register for those next level classes. Um, and so that, that is also a key reason we do that. There's also multiple aspects to what it means to register for classes. So as a student, you'll be taking classes in a major, if you've yet chosen a major, classes in electives, um, which are classes outside of your major that um, spark your interest, or perhaps you might choose to minor or double major, there's lots of options there, and classes in general education. And it can be somewhat confusing as a new student to figure out what courses you need, that are going to quote unquote count, right? Um, which all of your classes will in some respect, but classwork that you're going to be taking this fall, that's the requirements to help make progress towards your degree. So we wanted to get you enrolled in the proper courses in that sense. So we'll talk more about that as we go through, um, but that's our overarching philosophy about why we initially prepare your schedule. Okay, so, just a couple of caveats, things that if there's stuff to take away from today's presentation, um, well, among, of course, the many things we want you to take away, but these are some key points. So because we register you for classes over the summer, our summer registration advisors have special permission to uh, enroll you in classes and will sometimes um, override or uh, grant permission to register for a class that you yourself wouldn't be able to register yourself for. So when open registration comes about, which is what we're gonna talk about tonight, if you choose to drop a class, right? Delete something from your schedule, there's no guarantee that you'll be able to add that back in. Because starting Monday at eight in the morning, um, the registration opens up for everybody. So whether you're a brand new first year student, or an incoming transfer student, or a, a last year senior level student, everybody has access to the, the registration and scheduling at that point. So there's no guarantee you'll get that spot back. Um, and that's what we say here too about that slot being available to all students. So um, keep in mind that if there's something that you might want to be, that you might be interested in that you're not registered for, um, but the class that you're looking to perhaps uh, take out, uh, you would be open to taking. Don't delete it until you found an alternative. And we're going to talk a lot about that. Um, and there's multiple aspects to why our office will help assist you in registering. Uh, and for students who are utilizing financial aid, um, that's actually a factor in picking classes. And so if you are utilizing any kind of financial aid, including the Excelsior Scholarship, um, we really would encourage you to talk with our office before making any changes to your schedule. The good news is changes to your schedule can happen between Monday through the start of school. And so Molly's gonna talk a little bit about that.
Molly, I don't know if you can hop in. Yes, sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I'll go back to screen sharing. Okay. So what's gonna happen is that on Monday, you all have a time ticket that's going to enable you to be able to register starting on August 15th, so Monday at 8 a.m. What's gonna happen is open registration is then going to continue on throughout uh, the basically the days leading up to the first day of classes. So open registration will be open until August 28th. And then the following day, which is the first day of classes, Monday, August 29th, we're gonna move into what we call our ad drop week. And that's a week where you can go to your classes that we've registered for, or if you've changed your schedule up, what you've registered yourself for, and you can go to the class. And if you find you're in a class that you're like, yeah, this is not what I expected, let's find something else. During this week, you get the ability to drop a class, add something into your schedule without what I would consider any penalty to you, meaning that it won't show up on your transcript as like a withdrawal. Um, so you kind of, you have a full week to explore some course options. Um, this does close on your ad drop week will close on Sunday, September 4th. And then the following week, again, you have the next Monday off because it's Labor Day. So it's a little, a little break there. But then starting that second week of classes is when um, you're somewhat locked into your courses, meaning that you, you can't really adjust past that point. You can withdraw, which is something else in its entirety. We won't get too much into that. Um, but that week is the week that you're going to start going to all your classes. So Bef you know, you've got time to adjust your schedule as needed. Again, I we've we made some pretty pretty good schedules for everyone. We're pretty proud of them. But again, it's it's your preference if you want to update them. You do have some time in between the the semester starting um, to uh, to adjust and also make sure that you have time to get your books and stuff if you do change your schedule up. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. All right. So before um, you go ahead and register. Make sure that you review your degree works to review how the classes that you're currently enrolled in will apply to your degree. Um, we're going to get into degree works a little bit later on here um, so we can explain how this program works for you guys, what this program actually is, how to utilize it properly. Um, but when we look at degree works, we're going to explain why some why justification of why you're in the courses you are. So for example, there are some programs that require you to take courses in a sequence. You're going to see a lot of this in biology and you're going to see it in chemistry as well. Um, there's a lot of um, sequential courses that if you drop something in a sequence that may alter your degree progress a bit because they are only offered in certain times. Um, you also want to make sure that before you make a change, you can consult the course schedule and make sure there are seats in the class that you're looking to take, and then they meet a specific, that they meet a requirement unless it's an elective. Um, so, a, you're going to want to make sure that you have the approved and needed prerequisite for the class if that's applicable, and B, you're going to all want to understand as well like where it's fitting into your degree works and why we chose it for you. So, are this the course you're looking to add? Will it fulfill a gen ed requirement? Will it count towards an upper division requirement? Will it work for your major? Um, so stuff like that you just want to take a look at um, and make sure that it's it's still going to count in the places you want it to count. And then lastly, you understand that changing your schedule may impact your financial aid package if you are a recipient of aid. And again, to just reaffirm that, to echo what Heather said, consult with our office and the financial aid office mainly first um, to make sure that you are in aid eligible courses. Um, aid ineligible courses, again, may alter your financial aid packages. Um, so contact financial aid will always direct you down there to them first because they can pull your account right up and tell you what you got going on. All right. So before we jump in to anything else, let's talk about your time tickets. So what is a time ticket and why do you need one? Well, simple fact, a time ticket is your key to registration. And you need one because if you don't have one, you can't register. The system will physically not let you in. It's going to give you a giant red box and, and flash and er, er, no, you can't go in. Um, so what happens is, you already have a time ticket issued to you. So when you became a matriculated student at Geneseo, your account had a time ticket added on. 
What will happen in the fall as you go to register for the next semester, you're going to see in about mid-October, you'll get a notification that you have a time ticket. And that time ticket is imperative because it's going to tell you the date and the time that when you can register for your courses. So for example, some students may see a time ticket, and I'm just going to throw a random date out there, but you might see November 7th at 7 o'clock. You might see your friends have a time ticket of November 7th at 7.30. So not all start times are the same. So be very cognizant of what yours is because some students don't recognize that there's a difference and they think they can get in at one time and it's actually they're locked out still because they might have the later half hour delay. So just pay attention to that when you get um, a notification. Um, our registrar's office will issue the time tickets. They go out all at once um, when we run up the system. Um, so you all should receive your time tickets at the exact same time. Um, if for some reason, when you if you go to try to adjust your schedule on August 15th and it's telling you that you don't have a time ticket, please contact our office. Again, we'll give you contact information at the end of this um, because we need to go in and take a look at your account and we can issue you a time ticket um, manually if we need to do that for you. Um, and again, just to reaffirm that your time ticket date allows you to make changes during that window um, and along with the ad drop week, and then your time ticket will close and that will also close the system down. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So. We're going to talk through um, the Degree Works program, which Molly shared about, um, and explain to you a little bit about what that tool is and how that will help you map through your coursework to finish out your degree. Um, but you're going to see when we look at Degree Works that there are essentially three buckets of classes. Um, and students will often ask us, especially when we've created your schedule, are the classes I'm registered for quote unquote counting for something? Right. Um, and so they're counting in one of three buckets. So if you've chosen a major uh, and many students haven't, and that's okay too. So in the future, the classes that you're registered for may or may not fit in that in that respect, but courses required for your major would be one bucket, right? Uh, a second section of courses or bucket of classes would be your general education requirements. This is something that SUNY asks of all students, right? Because Geneseo is a SUNY school, which means we're a liberal arts college where we ask students to take classes from lots of different disciplines, study many different subjects outside of your major. And then a third bucket of classes called electives. And some students will use those to take classes that strictly sound interesting to them to kind of broaden their horizons. Um, or you may choose to do a second major or a minor, or in certain um, instances, certification programs, for instance, if you are intending to um, be an adolescent education uh, teacher, right? So those are the three quote unquote buckets. Um, the one around general education uh, is something that's uh, really fluid right now and is going to be in flux throughout the fall. So you'll see a lot of um, growth and movement here. But what we're really excited about is that you as an incoming class are part of the first generation of students who are going to be taking a new general education curriculum with classes across a variety of different subjects areas. Um, we call that interdisciplinary. So you can meet one of your requirements through lots of different subjects um, as in place of say a menu approach where you have to take one of each. Uh, so your degree works is actually going to note that and that's something we'll touch on uh, in just a second, but that's that, that middle section there. Okay, so at this point, um, we need to tell you a little bit about how you get into degree works. So Molly, take it away. Yep, so the first thing you, that you're gonna wanna do before you can get to degree works is you're gonna wanna log into your My Geneseo dashboard. So it's, if you haven't logged in yet, I highly encourage you to go do that sooner rather than later, just so you can acclimate yourself to it. Um, I, the easiest way to describe the My Geneseo dashboard is it is your hub. So this is a place where it's going to show your classes. Um, if it, as you can see in the example here, um, the students' classes are located with the, the instructor, the location, the date, the time. But it also has the site section and the site section is where you're going to have quick access to things such as degree works and night web and your Gmail account. 
Um, so to get to degree works, which is the green check box um, that Heather's highlighting with her, her mouse, um, you'll log into your MyGenestudio portal and then click on that box. Then what it will take it, you to is a separate screen that is a different system and degree works is if anybody's curious is is a degree tracking and progress tool um so this is going to be a, really essential for you guys to use throughout your college career um, because it's going to be able to track your progress with credits and um, requirement percentages and it's going to start filling in with the more classes that you take um so we can go ahead and demo um, what degree works actually looks like for current students um, and i'll just walk you through some of the basics of it and so one of our fellow students um, at geneseo was kind enough to allow us to utilize their account as our um, test account here for the purposes of today. So I brought that up. When you sign into your My Geneseo page, it's gonna automatically know that it's you. And so it will bring up your DegreeWorks account directly. Now, why are we even mentioning DegreeWorks as being relevant here, right? We're talking about changing your schedule. So as Molly had mentioned, because DegreeWorks is your degree mapping tool, it's kind of your roadmap to get your degree, were you to be interested in changing a class on your schedule, um, this is the tool you would use to identify what classes would be options in that way, or what uh, categories have yet to be met or satisfied, okay? Uh, also, it shows you what classes you're registered for and how those are filling requirements. And so, um, I'll, I'll let Molly take you through this, but I just wanted to give you the heads up that that's why this is a, a core piece of the work. Yeah, so this this tool is very relevant for everybody, um, especially now when we're getting ready to gear up for open registration. Um, but first things first, when you log into your degree works and it, it's like Heather said, it's going to pull up your personal information, which is really helpful. Um, what I like to first point out to students is that at the very top of your degree works um, is going to have more of what I would call your demographics. So it's going to show um, your major, um, and that's the same place, it's, it's not shown here, but if you have any minors, they will show there as well, or secondary majors. Um, the student is a education major, so their concentration that they've declared also shows up. Um, but also what's nice is that your advisor will populate here. So if you ever have a question on who your advisor is, you can just pop in here and it will tell you. Um, it also will tell you that your expect what your expected graduation date is um, and your academic standing, which again is is for another time to talk about. Um, but basically, here at the top, what it does is it summarizes for you. So as you can see, there are two bubbles, and one is called requirements, and one is called credits. What I want to point out about these two bubbles is that they may not always match up, and that's okay. Basically what DegreeWorks is doing is it's taking all of your, any transfer, pre-registered or in-progress courses, and it's calculating it based off of your major concentration, minors, et cetera, and all your other requirements. And it's calculating your percentage of how many credits have you completed to your 120 credit hour requirement, which is a requirement, a very strict requirement set for graduation. You have to at least take 120 credit hours to be able to graduate. But on the other hand, what you're going to see is your percentage for requirements. And that's basically pulling together all the different sections that you'll see in degree works and calculating how much of those have been fully completed or completed in progress. You'll see that too. Um, so don't ever be shocked if you, for some reason, don't see these match up right away. If they do, you're on track, to, you're pretty consistent with your credits versus your requirements, but most of the time they don't really match up. So even for this student, you can see that they're a little bit off kilter and that's okay. Um, the student most likely brought in some additional credits with them to Geneseo when they started, which is why their credit percentage is a little bit higher than their requirements. Um, their requirements could be varying for their education major and some of their incoming or their transfer credits may be electives. So it's it's a little it depends on where your credits are counting. OK, so from here again, here's your general hub of everything that needs to be checked off. 
So by the time that you graduate, so we're talking a while, but when you graduate, you're going to see this whole top section checked off in green check circles. Um, as you can see, this student is not ready to graduate yet, so there's a lot of incompletes, um, but what is nice is that this tool will calculate how many credits you currently have. What I will caution everybody with when you look at this number is that this number includes your pre-registered and or in-progress courses, so it's kind of pre-counting on your behalf. So this student's at 59 credits with the classes they're registered for for the fall semester. So just be aware that that's how things count. Sometimes students, uh, especially when they get ready to graduate, say, well, I have this many done. Almost. Um, degree works tends to, to jump a little bit on you, but it's OK. Um, so just keep that in mind as you go along. But here, um, what you see is um, your upper division requirement. This is a requirement um, that has basically what well, any uh, course that is 200 level and higher will populate into this section. Um, you need a certain amount of credits, so 45 credits are required. And there is an additional 24 credit, well, not additional, included in the 45, you must have 24 at the 300 and 400 level. So again, just make sure you're checking in on your degree works tool to make sure that all special requirements are being met. Um, but this is a, this section will easily start to get filled in with your major requirements. So don't think that you have to take all these additional courses. Um, anything that counts for your major that's or electives that are 200 and level higher will populate right in here for you. Then we have our outside major requirement. So you have, again, a certain amount of credit that are required. Um, this student is well on their way to finishing um, the outside major requirements. Um, but what I will also mention is that for our majors that are interdisciplinary, so for example, sociomedical sciences or sustainability studies, you're gonna see on your degree works, if you're in one of those majors, that you don't have this section. And that's basically because you're in an interdisciplinary major. So you're able to pull in courses from different prefixes. So you don't have to do an additional work on top of that. Um, and then down from here is going to be your gen ed section. So right now, um, this student, because they're a current student, their gen ed requirements look a little bit different. Um, because they're looking at the old ones, but we're going to go ahead and change to the uh, academic year of the 2022-2023. And basically what we can do is populate and show you what your degree works is going to look like in terms of gen ed. That brings us to a nice um, pausing point just to share that um, as I had mentioned earlier, that as a part of the new incoming class, you have a new gen ed curriculum. Um, and so if you have any friends who are currently at Geneseo, um, and I'm sure you will meet many in your classes and, and in your halls, if you decide you're living on campus, they have a different general education requirement than you all will. So um, please come seek our office out for guidance or your faculty advisor for guidance if you have questions about gen ed. Um, cause even though students have the best of intentions, sometimes there's a little bit of confusion because people have different journeys to finish their degree. Absolutely. So here is what your degree works will look like. It's called Geneseo Education for a Connected World. And so what's a little bit different about this one than the other one is that, as Heather said earlier, you have a wide range of options for classes to take to fill these requirements. Um, the same requirements that we have over both curriculums are the um, INTD 105 writing seminar. Um, our language is also the same. So you, um, a language is required through 102, unless you've completed at least four years of a language in high school, and then you're completed that section. You will have one natural science or the scientific literacy category to fulfill. And then same thing with the quantitative symbolic reasoning, you will have one requirement for there. But what the cool part is about this is that you have what we call now the participation in a global society section. 
And this is where you guys really get to explore different classes. So for example, I've been pushing this class really hard. So if I pushed it on you, you know, I apologize, but I'm really into it. We have a course offering for the fall that's called um, Sustainability in Literature. So it's, a, and I'm also going to shamelessly plug, I was an English major here at Geneseo, so I'm for anything English related. But um, what's great about this course is that you can fulfill your sustainability requirement with an English course. So it's not just necessarily you think sustainability, you're thinking like environmental science or natural science. It doesn't have to be that way. Um, same thing with the arts. You might find that other courses across different prefixes will fulfill that category. So you guys really have the option to go out and look and find things that interest you and that can start filling in these categories. Um, so what you'll see happen is as these categories get filled up, you'll see what they, um, in the blue, it says attribute, attribute equals DPP and all these. Those are basically the requirements that you need to fulfill. So as you take courses, those are going to start to disappear, and then you'll be done with this section once all of those are gone, and then you'll get a, a green check mark as well in the box. But you have freedom to choose what you want to take to fill this category, which is really cool. Yep, and as we share a little bit more about where to find classes and what to see what's available for the fall, you'll find that those that meet requirements in participation for a global society are actually labeled as such in the schedule. So that should help a little bit too. All right. And then what you'll get down here towards the bottom is your actual major that you've declared. So this is gonna show you the credit requirements for your major, how many have been applied, how many more you need. And it's gonna start showing you what classes you've taken and what you still need to take. So for an education major, this is showing all the different blocks that they need to take. Um, I will point out this, this will look a little different for most of you. Um, this student has actually completed the, the admission for the School of Ed. So a lot of you may be labeled a pre-early childhood and childhood education major or pre-childhood spe special education. It just simply means that there's special requirements within School of Education and they'll talk to you about it. But you'll see through blocks one through three at this point in time. Um, so as you go down the student, um, it won't show here, but um, she has the related requirements for the primary major. Um, so a lot of the majors have these additional requirements, especially you'll see in the sciences, that's where you're, um, if you're a bio major, you'll have your chemistry, your math, and your physics play into this. For education majors, this is where your additional um, math courses come in, your, your child development course and stuff like that. Um, psychology students will have like a bio course. So you'll have to pay attention to these requirements as well because they are needed to be completed in order to, to complete your major. Um, and then down from here is your, you may have one and you may have, you may not, and it's okay. If you have any elective credits, um, as this student shows, you'll have a little box that says electives. What I wanna point out here before I go any farther is that if there are any undeclared students um, participating right now, you're going to know that your degree works is going to look a lot differently than the students or students that have declared a major. And that's simply because the system can't pull in as much information because it doesn't have your major information yet to then say what other requirements are needed. So for example, if you're an undeclared student, you're not going to actually show an outside major requirement section at the top if you have additional credits that you brought in, say for as a transfer student that aren't fulfilling your gen ed requirements, they're actually all gonna populate down in that elective section. And that's fine. It's just how DegreeWorks can categorize everything before you declare a major. What I will say is that if you are an undeclared student and you do declare your major, you're gonna see a lot of shifting going on with your degree works. So you're gonna see that a lot of these courses that may be counting in electives, they'll then disperse once a major is picked up. And some may go to your major, some may go to outside major requirements if that's applicable to you, and some may stay in electives. Um, so just know that with degree works, it's an ever-changing tool. So you may see a course populating in one section one time, and it may move to so another course can fill in. 
So don't ever be shy to contact our office if you have a concern about your degree works. It's very common. Students reach out to us all the time for clarification or wondering what might have happened. Um, I'm certainly happy to walk through it with you if you want to stop in the office as well. Um, but it does, it does constantly evolve based on what you're taking. So just know that going into it, that this is not, it's not stagnant. It will constantly move for you. Thanks, Molly. Um, yeah. So a couple of things, um, just because keeping time in mind, I just want to draw to your attention. If you are somebody who has yet to decide on a major, you'll see that one of the courses in your schedule is something called EXPL 101 or the Geneseo First Year Seminar. Um, that's a course in which we explore all of the resources on Geneseo's campus, including how to use degree works to look at what different major offerings are available to you and what the requirements would be for that. Um, we're gonna also be hosting a session during orientation. So I hope you'll come visit me for that um, when you get to campus to learn more about how to read degree works um, because it can take multiple times to go through um, to get more familiar with it. Um, and as Molly said, she's available. We also have academic peer mentors who work in our office who are glad to sit down and take you through degree works piece by piece um, as you go as well. So, um, yep, uh, that's the degree works element. And uh, Molly, did I forget anything? Nope, um, you pretty much covered everything. Um, so again, the relevance of this to adjusting your schedule is make sure we would recommend you come into your degree works tool, just check it out, see where all your courses currently stand. Um, and if you're looking to adjust it, make sure to pay attention to where your new course may then fit in. So always just reference this tool, very helpful. Um, that reminds me of one final point on this, which is to say, if you are bringing in credit, say you took a class for, through another college, for instance, and you think that, um, and, and you've transferred in the credit, meaning that you've submitted your transcript, um, it's gonna show up in degree works when that credit is acknowledged um, and entered into your account. So if you, for instance, submitted a transcript um, a while back and don't yet see that credit reflected, that would be a great reason to contact our office so we can confirm that for you. Um, but also if there are instances where you're, you might have a question about whether a class you're taking this fall um, is, is uh, equivalent to a class that you're transferring in that doesn't yet show, um, that'll be a great reason to give our office a call as well. We wanna make sure that all the courses you're taking this fall are new so you get credit for all of them. Okay, um, we want to get to the what we call meat or tofu of our presentation. I, I would say tofu. Most others would say meat, I think. Um, so I'll touch on this just briefly because we did mention a little bit about uh, transfer credits. If you have credits coming in that you don't yet see reflected or you say, oh, I forgot to send that, right? Um, you'll want to send your AP credits straight through the College Board website. Um, there will be an option to send to a specific institution and there you would select GenCO. Um, similarly, true with any classes that you might have taken as IB courses, if you did an I, IB degree, um, an international baccalaureate degree, um, or if you took college classes, whether in high school or if you're an incoming transfer student, uh, you want to make sure that you have a final transcript sent. And that's something you can request directly through the registrar's office website of that school, even if you took that class as a high school student. So for instance, if you took a class through Syracuse University, you took your writing seminar at Syracuse through SUPA, you were considered a student at Syracuse University and can request an official transcript be sent to Geneseo. Um, I also just briefly want to point out the transfer equivalency data bank, because if there are classes that you haven't yet transferred over to Geneseo and are interested in changing your schedule, you're going to want to account for the fact that you might have credit coming in for a class that sounds interesting to you and you don't want to register for a class that you're going to get credit for. So the transfer equivalency data bank is accessible straight from the academic planning and advising website. Um, and as I had shared with Molly yesterday, these arrows look very aggressive, um, but that's, uh, we just wanna point out a couple in, important links here. Um, the transfer equivalency data bank is accessible on the side there. That lists all the colleges that students have previously transferred in credit from. Every time a new class comes in, our dean reviews that class and reads the description and sees what the 
closest equivalent would be at Geneseo. So we can do our best to issue you credit for that. Um, but there's a number of classes already in that data bank. Um, and similarly, transfer of pre-college credit is where you're going to read how your AP classes um, or IB or even CLEP scores would come over to meet requirements or fill credits. Okay, so let's get to the registration part because that's the, that's the point, right? Um, so Molly, tell us a little bit about your experience. So this is where I'm supposed to make a, a funny little quip about back in my day when I registered, I didn't have all the cool tools. So I was the cat frantically typing in CRNs as fast as I could, because back in my day, we did not have what we will show you kind of touch on a, a plan ahead tool, but uh, we had to uh, put courses in one by one as fast as we could. So you had to prioritize what class you wanted first and foremost and hope you could get in the rest. So you guys have a very great automated system now. It's very easy to transition with and, and, and use. Um, but all I can say is you'll be okay. <laughs> Sometimes registration stresses people out. It's not stressful. Um, you know, we do the best we can to help you out. If you have struggles during registration, always come into our office. We're certainly there to help you as much as we can. Um, but I promise you, you all will get through it. And then you'll be, is when you're a senior, you're going to look back on this and be like, I remember when I was a freshman and panicking because nothing was open and you got into all your classes. So you'll be good. I also good wanna, yeah, um, on the point of anecdotes, I also just want to add to that over the course of your time at Geneseo, you're going to take lots of classes. Some of those are going to be in things you're already interested in, and some of those will be in things that might be brand new subjects to you. That's one of the cool things about college is that um, you can take lots of different subjects that weren't previously offered to you in high school, for instance. And you might even find that one of those classes really sparks your interest and you want to learn more about that entire major. Um, that was my own personal experience. I ended up with a major in sociology, which was something I had never heard of in high school, um, due to some classes that I took as electives um, through my, my first year schedule. So uh, it will be a journey. Imagine it like the those old books, um, choose your own adventure. Okay. We talked briefly about prerequisites and co-requisites. Um, prerequisite classes are those that you are required to take before you can take upper level classes. So for instance, if you're a psychology major and you're really interested in learning about cognitive psychology and how we learn to think about thinking, um, you need psychology 100 first, right? That's the prerequisite class for that major. Um, you're going to, I'll show you where you would look to find if there's a prerequisite. Um, a lot of times, if you're interested in making a change to your schedule and something in the major sounds really interesting to you, um, but it's particularly specific or say it's in an upper level class, um, and an upper level are typically those that are 200 level or higher, um, most often 300 and 400 levels, which you will commonly get into late sophomore, junior, and senior year. Um, there's often prerequisite classes before you can take those. So that's something you wanna take a very close look at before you go about trying to change your schedule. Um, and you're gonna be able to see if a class has a prerequisite. Um, one, on degree works, as Molly just shared, uh, talk to, talking through that tool, all of those classes that are in blue with a little blue line under it have a link and up pops the description and it tells you if there's a requirement you have to take first. So that's a great way to find that information and we'll, sh we'll share with you another way as well. Um, a co-requisite class means a class you need to take concurrently to another class, meaning they're paired, right? They're linked, two classes you have to take at the same time. If you are taking, for instance, a natural science, um, many of those require you to take a lab at the same time, depending on the science um, and depending on the course. Uh, and the same is true with some education classes. Um, there are a handful of general education courses that's going to be true for. You'll see that throughout. Um, but if as you're trying to make changes to your schedule, you see an error pop up that says um, linked, right, um, or missing co-rec, um, that means that there's an additional course you would need to add to your schedule at that same time. 
Um, and again, if you think you have the credit coming in for something as the prereq, contact us starting Monday morning and, and we'll work with you through your schedule to make sure that that's true. You're gonna find that if you're bringing in credit for a class, that the college needs your official transcript, meaning a transcript coming directly from that college you took credit at, um, not something that you send us through, for instance, your email, uh, your personal email. It's gotta come straight from that school. That's what makes it official. And that's what gets it entered into your DegreeWorks account. So if there's some confusion there, we can help clarify that for you if whether or not we have the official um, or a copy from when you were enrolled in the class because the school that you took that class through doesn't automatically send us your transcript when you're finished. Um, you need to request that separately. Okay, finding classes. Um, just for a matter of time's sake, um, uh, Molly, if you agree with me, I think we should um, walk through um, Megan's account and then um, we can even send, uh, we can show everybody where to find this information on the web as well. Absolutely. Um, okay, so how to find classes. Um, on your My Geneseo page, as we looked at before, right, that hub that Molly talked about, um, you'll see one of the links or the, the, I don't know, apps says registration. And to me, it looks like a sheet of paper with some, I don't know, a green sheet of paper here, or sheet of paper with green lines. And that's where you would click in to find courses. You would select the particular semester that you intend to register for, which hint is fall, right? Fall 22. Um, and then it's going to pop up a series of um, options to you of how to search and how to see your current schedule so that any classes you're registering for or hoping to register for, you can ensure don't have a time conflict with, um, with the classes that you're currently in. So thanks to our friend who volunteered her account, we can show you quickly um, as well what that looks like. And so I can pretend to be our friend and show you her account on her behalf but you won't need to do any of this kind of stuff because again, your my Geneseo is gonna know it's you. So um, let me back up a screen and share it this way. Okay, so when you click on that registration link, it's gonna say, it's gonna send you to this page and you are looking for register for classes. Again, there's a tutorial on this, um, which is a four minute, quick thing that runs, um, that's an online video, um, which we can share, but this is the way you would go in. So we're gonna do it step-by-step. Step. So if you click on register for classes, it's gonna know it's you. It doesn't know it's me, or it doesn't know that I'm the student in particular. So um, I have one additional step here. Um, thank you, our friend, okay. So when you click into registration, it's gonna bring you to this screen. And here is where you're on the bottom left going to see the classes that you are already registered for. There's a really helpful tool where you can make the panel at the bottom a little bit bigger so you can see all that information at one time, right? The schedule details, when your classes are as of right now, that gives you the name of them and you can click on it for further details. It also shows you on the right-hand side the summary, essentially um, the courses you're registered for, how many hours the class, meaning how many credits the class is worth, how, um, you know, when it's uh, the section, all of that, those kinds of de important details. But here's where it shows that you're registered. Um, the reason I bring this piece up here is because it shows you the option to web delete, web withdraw, or excuse me, web drop the class. Um, that's how you would take yourself out of the course. Um, my screen shows us multiple options. Um, yours is going to show you the option to web drop. Um, and that's something that you want to do with great caution, but not until we do this next step here. So you can search available courses uh, through this tool. So our student here, um, let's say we were really interested in 
in um, psychology and she wanted to take introduction to psychology. You would go to the subject tool and you could either go through and search all the options that Geneseo offers, or if you wanted to fast track it, you could just put in which subject you wanted to look at. And here we're gonna click search and it's gonna show us all of the psychology classes that Geneseo is offering in the coming fall. You'll see there's six pages of them, right? Um, but you'll wanna keep in mind that that notion of prerequisites, classes you have to take first um, are very relevant here because again, those upper level classes are gonna have a lot of requirements you need to take to be prepared to take that level of course. And so as you're looking at the course options, if this student were interested in taking introductory psychology, Psych 100, uh, it would show you the time of the course, when it meets. Um, in fact, if you wanna get really fancy, you can look at where it meets um, by scrolling over. And it's gonna tell you, and this is what's extremely helpful, if there's, if there's a time conflict, meaning if you're registered for a class that meets at that exact same time. So in this case, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, at 1.30, 1 1.30 to 2.20, this student is enrolled both Monday and Friday in a class that would conflict. So unless that was a class that she intended to drop, um, that section of Psych 100 wouldn't work, wouldn't fit. Um, but this section does, you'll see here, it says there's one seat available and you could go in and add that course. So we've given our friend a heads up that we were going to register her for classes. So I'm gonna pretend I'm doing this here. If you wanted to add this course, you would simply click add. And then in that bottom section, as we were talking about, you're gonna see that class as pending in your schedule. Pending means you're not registered for it yet. So um, it's critical that you remember to click submit uh, in order to actually register for a class. Now keep in mind, um, we wanna make sure that you have a manageable number of credits that you're taking this fall, meaning a manageable number of classes that you're enrolled in. You don't wanna, for instance, take too many credits. Um, if you're a full-time student, a minimum of 12 is considered full-time. Many students opt between somewhere between 14 and 16, um, but it's all based on how many credits a class is worth. And that's determined by how often it meets um, and what the course requirements are. So in this instance, Psych 100 is a three credit class. So if, if Megan were to truly add this course, we would wanna drop her from, withdraw her from something else. So we're gonna pretend, but not actually do it because I don't want, our friend to be concerned that she lost her class. So right now we have Psych 100 as pending, right? Again, we're not registered for it yet, but say she wasn't interested in taking her Spanish class and she wanted to withdraw from that. Your options are gonna be limited. Yours is gonna say web drop register. Um, and so you would click that option. It's, it's gonna be clear web drop um, and then you would want to ensure, and this is a this is a, a trick, you'll see really teeny tiny in the bottom there something that reads conditional add drop. What that means is don't take me out of this class, meaning Spanish two, unless you can promise me there's truly a seat in Psych 100. Okay, well, why wouldn't there be? It says that there is an open seat. Now, if you remember, everybody's able to go in and make changes at once, right? So while you're in the process of trying to delete a class, somebody else might have also been interested in that site class and take that seat, right? Um, before you have the option to hit submit. And so as a safety measure to make sure you remain registered in that number of credits, click conditional add drop at the bottom because the computer system will then say, oh wait, Psych 100 is now full don't take the student out of Spanish, okay? So that's, that's a super helpful thing um, that you'll wanna remember in future terms too. And then simply click submit. And that would add the course to the student's schedule. And you would then see that class added in here. You'll see right now it's grayed out because it's showing us that, that um, that's where it would fit and that's how it would fill out the student's schedule. So, um, that's certainly a useful tool. I wanna share with you, as we were talking earlier about general education courses, 
let's go back a screen. Um, and again, we didn't save that because that person is not actually changing their schedule. We had talked earlier about wanting to take a look at whether a class is gonna meet a general education requirement. In this instance, participation in global society. And so you would click on, let's say you were really interested, you could do this two ways, but um, for the purposes of poking around and looking at one or two classes at this point, if you're looking to change your schedule, I would recommend we go about it this way. Let's say you were really interested in art history as a subject. You wanted to learn more about how history influenced the art forms of the time. You could click that as your subject and click search. And then at the very end here under attributes, it's going to tell you if it meets something in participation in global society. Um, you'll see on degree works where it has uh, participation in global society with the little letters, right? Um, as Molly mentioned before, like DPP as an example, those attributes. Here it's spelled out. So again, if you need help, you can contact our office and we'll, we'll take you through it. But in this case, Art History 172 counts for creativity and innovation. That's one of those participation in global society areas we were talking about earlier. Now, in this instance, that class reads as full, meaning right now there isn't a seat available. And as you go through on during Add Drop Week, or excuse me, Open Registration, or even Add Drop Week, you will see instances where it says a class is full. That means that, of course, there's no more seats remaining in the class. But because um, open registration happens over several weeks, I would encourage you to go back in and check regularly because people are making changes all the time. Some people are morning people, some people are doing it at 11 o'clock at night. So you're going to see that in constant flux. So if there are classes that sound really interesting to you, write them down ahead of time and you can look for those specifically. Um, and again, there is a tool, uh, um, a website that can take you through this. We can share that with everybody at the end, just being mindful of time. But this is how you actually go in and make changes to your schedule. Um, again, one, any questions you want to come and talk to us? Yep, Molly, did you want to add something? Yeah, one thing I just want to point out here really quick so there's not a lot of confusion is with the attributes, what you see is what something that's labeled new and versus old. Um, and that's simply for students who are, um, the new would be our new gen ed, so the one that you all are in. Um, but if you see anything that says old arts, old social science, um, that's, that's basically an indicator for the students who are in the, what we would call the old curriculum, to know what courses they can choose from. Because as I said before, you guys now have a wide range. And as you can see, some of these classes have multiple attributes on them. Those classes will only work for your curriculum. So current students have to notice that what some of the courses that you can use to fulfill a requirement, they can't. Um, so if you just question what the old versus new is, just pay attention to anything that says new. Um, you'll, you'll use that for your gen eds. Yep. Um, and you want to look to, thank you, Molly, for the longer words, right? So new, you'll see new arts, um, but arts is a broad overarching category you would wanna look for um, the, longer, the, the longer language here, creativity and innovation or world cultures and values. Many of the classes actually meet, um, would fulfill different requirements. And so although you can only use it once to count for a requirement, um, generally speaking, uh, you can use that to fulfill one of several requirements. And that's part of the value of the new gen ed is being able to um, take classes outside of subject areas that are the traditional subject areas you would study that, that I don't know, subject in, for instance, creativity is related to art and commonly, but you might take a class in, I don't know, um, this is a poor example, but it's the example that comes to mind. Um, graphic design that would also fulfill creativity. That's not something Geneseo is currently offering, but um, would, for instance, count as a creativity class. Or world cultures and values. You might study art history, but similarly, you might decide to study something in English that looked back at world cultures, um, or something in social sciences that looked back at world cultures. So lots of options there. 
Okay, um, I'm gonna stop sharing this particular piece, um, noting the time. Uh, if folks have the chance to stick around, great. If not, um, you can follow up with us if you have any questions at the Academic Planning and Advising Office. Um, but we'll just share a couple last things with you. Um, as we were looking earlier at Degree Works, or excuse me, the registration screen, uh, if you were to click on a course, it'll also tell you there if that class has a prerequisite. So let's go back in and say, I'm really interested in econ. I wanna learn more about economics. And I hear there's a really cool class in econ stats, learning about statistics and its relationship to economics. So I'm curious if there's a requirement that I have to take first, a prerequisite. You can actually go in and take a look at this and it's going to show you whether or not there's a class that you have to have completed before you register for this class. Um, and it also it's nice if you click on it, it gives you a little description and all those things, um, whether or not it meets a requirement for gen ed. Um, it's a handy tool, but there's where you can also check to see if you're missing a prereq before you go about registering for a class. Um, yeah, so hopefully that's helpful as well. Okay, last but not least, um, Molly, do you want to speak a little bit to some of the, the tricks that you found over time? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing first for our tips and tricks is that you want to check everything multiple times. Um, and that goes for everything that you do. Um, make, luckily, we like we said, um, and Heather said that you have the conditional add drop. So that's always really helpful because there is constant moving and changing with courses. Um, but just check everything, check your degree works, check your registration screen. Um, you also want to make sure that you have that an other course picked up before dropping an existing one. Um, sometimes students get into a little bit of a mess when they don't do that. And that's where we can't guarantee we can get you back in that seat. Um, if you do 10, if you drop it without that conditional add drop button checked. Um, again, if you're receiving the Excelsior scholarship in particular, you are required to complete 30 credit hours a year. That's between fall through summer. Um, so you do want to try to aim for anywhere between 14 to 16 credits a term um, that usually will keep you on par with main, maintaining your eligibility. Um, and again, the conditional add drop. And then if you have any questions, ask someone. Um, our office is, again, a great resource. Um, you can certainly, like I said, reach out to financial aid if you have questions about aid eligibility. But don't ever be afraid to ask something or to someone if you're just not sure. It's better to ask before um, doing it yourself and then we're trying to have to backtrack to fix things. Um, but other than that, you guys are, you guys are in good hands. You're going to know what to do. Um, and on the topic of hopefully being in good hands, we think you are, um, you can schedule an appointment with an advisor in our office. Um, if you have further questions pertaining to your particular degree works account, credits you're transferring in, how things are meeting requirements, um, generally how to go about this process. Although next week, um, things are going to be moving and shifting quickly. So, um, it, you'd be better off to call the office if you had a quick question in that respect. But you can actually schedule an appointment directly online through our academic planning and advising website. So you would simply type into Geneseo academic planning and advising and up pops this helpful page that tells you a little bit about us, our office, what we do, how we can support you. Um, and this is something that if you wanted to schedule an appointment, students, you would do directly yourselves. Um, you're welcome to have somebody um, at home or support uh, join you on that, but you actually have to go about making that appointment directly. Um, and you would do that through your Geneseo account and you could set up a virtual appointment. Um, there's a link here that walks you through the how to do that. Um, that's through our Navigate tool, which is something you're gonna learn all about at orientation. Um, but if there were a particular staff person you wanted to meet with, um, for instance, uh, say you wanted to follow up on tonight's presentation, uh, you could actually click staff contact uh, and go about scheduling an appointment directly with me. And it would open up my availability to meet next week or in the following weeks. Typically during open registration, things are moving rather swiftly. So it's often best to call if you have a question, um, reach out to us that way. 
Uh, we work through email as quickly as we can, but as you might anticipate this time of year, um, that kind of also comes in swiftly. So um, yes, don't be shy. Feel free to reach out in that respect. Okay, and with that, I'm gonna stop the recording and I will um, open it up for general questions. I know some students left questions in the chat and, and we weren't able to address that during the actual session itself. So, um,